What can I do? Just leave everything to me. Please. It's in your hands. I know you'll give the Pokemon excellent care. You got it here just in time. That's my job. Oh, my goodness. I left my motorcycle parked at the front desk. Next time, use the driveway. <laughs> that annoying could only belong to <laughs> my. It's not fair. You cheated somehow. How could you know what your cards were when they were still face down? I'm psychic. And you're done. <laughs> Why do I duel? For all the comforts that I crave. Designer clothes, travel perks, anything to avoid real work. Hot cars, turbocharged for living large. <laughs> I choose so that... to challenge you, Joey. What? You challenge me? Do you have the guts to accept? Get it? I want to play you, kid. <laughs> Guess you heard about my skill. Don't flatter yourself. Mm -hmm. I overheard you and Yugi talking on the boat, and I know he gave you the only starship that you have. My motto is, take out the weakest players first. And considering that you wouldn't even be here if Yugi hadn't given you one of his chips, you've got to be the weakest duelist on the island. Hey. I threw into his tournament. Yugi! Huh? <laughs> hey, Mai! Pretty big turnout for this thing. All losers. Well, there's a lot of duelists here I've never seen before. Oh, this is so exciting! I wonder whose butt I should kick first in this tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Joe, also known as Jay-Z Production on YouTube. Today I got an amazingly, wonderfully talented guest today. What is your name, miss? Uh, I'm Megan Hollingshead. Welcome. I got a couple of questions for you. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, what are you doing during these times of quarantine? Well, uh, I am like all of you. I'm staying at home as much as I can. And uh, I am recording. Actually, I'm, I'm here in my studio. I'm recording in this big room behind me. It's oh. a carpeted sound booth. Um, I'm going to open the door, see if you can see inside. Um, yeah, I've got a microphone in there. It's a, it's a decent little closet. Um, nice. That's I basically cool. the computer I'm talking to you on right right now. Take my computer in there. There's a microphone, and I set up, and uh, I can talk to studios from there. And that's new since quarantine. I um I had never worked from home before. I had done some auditions from home, but I usually go to studios to record. And uh, uh, suddenly during quarantine, um, everyone was saying do you record from home? Do you record from home? And I thought, well, I better, I better start. Mm -hmm. So I found this booth on Craigslist. Um, oh. and, uh, I jumped on it, uh, cause I had a closet where I would record, but I could hear, um, in California, everybody has leaf blowers. I don't know if that's, Never seen I don't know if that's a thing in other parts of the country, but here leaf blowers every day, somebody is blowing their leaves instead of raking them. So, um, I would be recording an audition and all of a sudden, mm. so I got a booth where you cannot hear leaf blowers and I can audition and record and work from home. Awesome. So that's what I'm doing. Um, it's pretty neat. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty lucky. I'm pretty lucky. So, uh, what made you want to become a voice actress and who was your biggest inspiration for voice acting? Ooh, good question. Um, I, I started out. I started out as an actress. Well, before that, I started in theater and film. I I knew since I was about a teenager that I wanted to be a part of the industry. I didn't know how. Um, I loved uh, sci-fi and adventure movies, and I loved them so much. I wanted to get in the screen and live with them. I wanted to be in that movie. Um, I wanted to be the friend of the protagonist. I wanted, I wanted it. And so I told my mom that I was going to go to film school. And she, and I was like, I don't know, I was in high school. And she said, well, you better go, go down and get in the theater department at your school. And I thought, well, that's super unrelated, but I did it. <laughs> and, um, and it was amazing. Like it, it seemed totally different to me, but, um, but I loved it. I loved being a part of a group. I loved um, the, I loved theater. I loved playing pretend. And I loved the people I was working with. 
And I met someone who also loved action adventure movies. And so he said, let's make our own movie. And we did. And it was, I don't know how the movie was. I don't even, I'm not even sure we finished it. Um, but I learned how to do that. And then I did go to film school and I thought I would be like, I don't, I didn't even know what I thought I'd be. I, I was in suddenly in film school learning how to direct. And I was like, I don't really want to direct. And, and I found myself trying to get into my friends' movies instead. So, um, so that's when I was like, hmm, maybe I want to act, maybe. But I tried to avoid it because it's a really hard life. Like, it's a lot of struggle. And then finally, I, I moved to New York to be <clears throat> like a producer, some sort of behind the scenes person. And, uh, and all I wanted to do was act. And finally, I was like, forget it. I'm an actress. So while I was there, I went to film school or went to acting school at night and did my best to work. I worked for free because um, I loved it. I did what I could. I, uh, I finally got some jobs where I got paid. Mm -hmm. And then somebody said, do you do voiceover? And like a good improv artist, I said, yes. And I got some auditions and discovered I loved that because... It was like doing theater in a small room. <laughs> mm -hmm. I could, I could act, and people paid me for it, and it was super fun. And so um, I was the stars aligned. I was tremendously lucky, and my very first job was on Pokemon. I got the job of Nurse Joy on Pokemon and um, loved it. I loved everyone I worked with. Um, they not only let me do Nurse Joy, but they would say, can you do a, a little girl's voice? Can you be a cheerleader? Can you be this? Can you be that? And so I got to, it was like um, learning on the spot. And the directors I worked with were amazing at kind of teaching me what I needed to do on the spot. Um, and I just, from there, I got more and more auditions. And really, I, it, it just grew and grew. It kind of snowballed. Nice. Well, I think you're a very talented voice actress. So I've been very, very talented. That is so kind of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite role you've done? And can you please do the voice of that, if you don't mind? Oh. Um, it's hard. It's like picking your favorite kid because I do... <laughs> I do have such, each one is so different and I have such um, strong feelings about it. But I was talking about this recently and I, I love my Valentine because she's so strong. Um, she's a little bit sassy, but not evil. Very strong opinions. Um, very confident. I think she's a good role model. Well, sometimes a little bit, um... A little bit selfish sometimes, but she does what she has to do. And uh, I often find myself when I audition uh, for a strong character, I often uh, fall into my Valentine. She's so she's so a part of my DNA now that I slip back into my Valentine, and I have to be careful of that. It's like your alter ego, right? Like my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> That's like cool. it's, it's such a natural place for me now. That's cool. And if you don't mind, can you do the voice of a uh, Nurse Joy? If you don't mind. Um, my very first line as Nurse Joy was, "Next time, use the driveway." <laughs> Thank you so much. Or mostly, what I said was, "Your Pokemon will be just fine," <laughs> because inevitably it was. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there was some worry, but inevitably everything turned out okay. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank you. I love your voices. They're so cool. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks. You're very oh. sweet. This is all going to go right to my head. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, if you could pick any role in any TV show, movie, etc., what role would you have loved it on? But I wish you didn't, but you wish you did. That's so hard. Um, one that I didn't get that it was hard I couldn't watch it for years because I really wanted it that I auditioned for and I got a call back for was I was uh called back for the a voice match for Amy Poehler's character in Inside Out oh. so that was like 
that was like one that got away. Um, so I love that. Uh, what else? What would I have loved to do? I don't, I don't know. I admire, um, um, I've just been watching Howl's Moving Castle. And I just think, um, I'm forgetting her name right now, but the woman who played Sophie did such a good job. She's so good. Um, so I don't know if I want to play Sophie, but I want to be her. I want to be that actress. Um, who would I love to play? There's so many. I, I don't have a good answer for that. I'll have to think about it and I will, I will email you an awesome answer. <laughs> Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Over the years of your career, do you still keep in touch with the co-stars, directors, etc.? Yeah. Still- yeah. Yeah. I mean, the world we live in, it ends up mostly being, um, you know, on social media. Yeah. But uh, the people I see are, uh, Tara Sands is one of my besties. Oh, um, she is, she, we go way back to our Pokemon days. She was among a, among a ton of other voices. She is Bulbasaur in Pokemon. And um, she and I, our birthday is a couple days apart. So we, up until recently, we we have found a night to go out to dinner together and celebrate our mutual birthdays. Um, and we've done, she got me back into the convention circuit. So uh, I just kind of, copied what she was doing and she actually got me into a couple conventions so we were lucky enough to do a couple together and had so much fun um i also still see veronica taylor and lisa ortiz oh, wow. so those are those are a couple of my girls nice that's cool <clears throat> yeah come to yeah come to a con chicago be cool i'll be like hi do you remember nerdy <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And in our job, we don't get to necessarily work together. Um, so sometimes I don't, I'll, you know, I'll look at the credits for something and be like, Oh my gosh, we work together. We're on the same show. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but the di- directors, we get to see obviously more than others and, and uh, engineers, engineers, oh. we get to mm-hmm. hang out with. That's always fun. Who is the coolest person that you've worked with the coolest? You know, um, well, I'll tell you the coolest person I got replaced by. <laughs> the biggest star who's replaced me is Ricky Gervais. I did a, um, I did a feature film. My only feature film was Escape from Planet Earth, and uh, I got replaced by Ricky Gervais before it came out, which was hilarious. Um, Who's the coolest person I've worked with? I mean, everybody I've worked with is cool in terms of like being a good person. I, I say, and I stick by it, that I have not worked with any jerks in this field. Like people in voiceover across the board are amazing people. Um, there's some crazy people um, because actors, but I have not worked with any jerks. And I haven't worked with like... Like the coolest would be Mark Hamill. I know people in my field, Mark Hamill does voiceover. And so I know a bunch of people who have worked with him, but I have not. Um, Oh, I took a class once and Lily Tomlin was in it. Oh my. And she, I sat down next to her and she goes, hi, I'm Lily. And I was like, I know, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but I was really cool. I was like, hi, I'm Megan. Um, So she's the coolest person that I've met and hung out with a little bit. (laughs) But yeah. What director tell you the most? And which director would you love to work with? What director? What What was the first part? Sorry about that. Uh, what director tell you the most? And which director would you uh, love to work with? Oh, you know, uh, I have to say Michael Hegney. He oh. was the first director I worked with on Pokemon. And he was the one who cast me. Because he literally in the audition for Pokemon, he taught me how to do every character. He was like, like I can just think of, um, his direction was so good. He, I remember like specifically when I auditioned for Ash, I auditioned for all the characters. He let me read for everything. He was so patient. And so 
for Ash, he said, um, I had never done a little boy's voice. I didn't, I had no idea where to begin. And he said, okay, little boy's voice. You're going to be, it's going to be like a uh, high pitch, but it's going to be kind of scratchy. Yeah. So, um, so he like, he talked me through it. It was like taking an, a voiceover class. He was so patient with me. And um, so, so that was amazing. He was an amazing casting director. And then as, and then because he was the first director I worked with, he kept coaching me in the sessions. So in that sense, he was one of the most amazing directors I'd ever worked with. And, the, and then really every director I've worked with has added so much. They're all so different and they bring something so special. Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, she is so, she so keeps me uh, honest. You know, she won't let, she won't let a moment go by if, unless it's real. Um, so when I do Naruto, it's like, it's got to be real and it's got to be intense. And so that's amazing. Like she brings out such good performances. Um, Wendy Lee is so good. Same thing. Wendy Lee keeps things real. And she also, um, when I make her laugh, uh, I'm so proud of myself because she's so funny. She makes me laugh. I like make her laugh, and we just the whole thing is buoyed. We have a great session. So every director is uh, a different kind of amazing. And the directors I would love to work with, um, I don't know. I wish Miyazaki was still alive. <laughs> yeah. That's why I should believe what I want to do as a career. Become like a director. Oh really? Yeah, that's, that's so. That's, that's awesome. amazing. Yes, do it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because because I write scripts. Like besides podcasting and all that, I do actually write scripts. Fantastic. Yes. It's fun. It's fun. I love like stuff like that. Like I like that. Yes, I, I'm all for it. Write scripts, direct. Beautiful. Do you have um? Do you have friends who are actors so you can? Practice and bring stuff to life. A couple, yeah, I have a couple people that, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm excited. I, I love, I love writing. It's, it's like a big hot passion of mine. So, uh, that's the best. That's yeah. the best. Follow your passion, and there, there's so many, you know, there's so many ways to express it and to to do things on your own and to get stuff out there any way you can. Thank you. If you are a voice actress, what would your career be? And what other interesting hobbies do you have besides like, you know, voice acting? Um, if I wasn't a voice actor, I wonder if I would have stuck with acting in New York. Um, it's brutal. Um, I wonder. I wonder what I would have done. I, I wish I had stuck with dance as a kid. I... Uh, I, I, as a kid, if something was hard, I stopped and I wish I'd been encouraged to keep going because now I watch ballet and, and dance and I love it so much and I wish I'd had a part of that. So in fantasy land where kids grow up to be um, firemen and ballet dancers and veterinarians, I wished I'd been a ballet dancer. <laughs> um, but probably if I weren't voice acting, I'm really into quilting right now. <laughs> It's so dorky, but there's lots of quilters who are artists. Like they don't just make quilts; they make like abstract art with fabric. That's still pretty. So that, yeah, that would be the next. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do when I'm uh, when uh, I retire. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna go to art school, and uh, and probably do some fabric art. Nice. That's cool. That's cool. I like that. That's cool. I that's really cool. <laughs> Yeah. Band and type of music. Um, I'm uh, a Johnny Cash is still my hero. Nice. I love me some Johnny Cash. Uh, in fact, when I do, I need to warm up my voice before I work. Um, I know some people can just jump right in, but when I start the day, I sound ridiculous. So Johnny Cash is usually the first because my I wake up like this. So I start with some Johnny Cash. I sing along to Johnny in the shower, and um. Uh, love me some Johnny Cash. I love Leonard Cohen. Uh, I'm not quite up to speed on the new stuff, although my kids love Billie Eilish, and I do too. Like, she's so good. She's so talented. And uh, another one, another current one I love is St. Vincent. She's She rocks my world. 
Nice. Believe it or not, actually, I got to meet my favorite band of all time. Believe Who's that? Okay, so there's 70s, 80s, and 90s. Excellent. Okay, go. Queen. Brilliant. Yeah. That's my favorite band right there. I really love them. So. Wait, you met members yeah, of Queen? <laughs> I met Brian and Roger, the guitarist and the drummer. No way! Where? How? So it was like a concert, like in Chicago, like in tw- yeah, twenty seventeen on my brother's birthday. And I said, like, we had backstage passes. I said, you're Brian May and Roger. You know what I mean? I was like freaking out. You had backstage passes to Queen, dude. That is amazing. Mm-hmm. That I was, I was is- like starstruck. <laughs> of course, yeah. of course. I love oh like. God. I, I wouldn't have even known what to do with backstage passes to Queen. I would have been like, <laughs> <laughs> "Wow, that's so yeah. cool." I love like '80s music too. Like I'm a big '80s fan. Like when you like, because like, you think I like nowadays music. I love '80s music. Like I'm, I don't know because I was like raised on '80s music. I just love '80s music. Cool. Uh, yeah, I have a. I'm a dork at, at when it comes to '80s music. I'll start dancing. Nice. <laughs> '80s people. So. Hopefully, when things get back to normal sooner rather than later, are there any projects you have in the works? Um, what projects are in the works? Um, nothing big. I'm continuing to work on Pokemon Journeys. Yay! Oh. So, so psyched to be back on that. I'm, I, I didn't think I'd ever work on Pokemon again, um, which I'd made peace with, although it made me sad. So I'm continuing to work on that. Um, other jobs I've had are... Uh, oh, I continue to work on Guild Wars, which uh, has just been so much fun. They they are wonderful, and I love working on that show because it is so well written. And when a show is amazingly well written, my work is so easy. I don't have to do any. I don't have to do anything. The words lead me where to go. I mean, I don't. I don't do nothing. Let's not be. I don't want to be totally self-effacing, but it. It, good words lead to good acting. Um, so uh, Pokemon Journeys, Guild Wars, and everything else I've done has been like little small background stuff. But even that, I can't, um, not allowed to mention it till it comes out. Okay. Okay. Uh, what advice would you give younger people who want to become like a voice actor, voice actress? What advice? Yeah. Um, acting, acting, acting. Um, and it, and, in conjunction with acting, specific voice work, Alexander technique, link ladder technique, and um, Edith Skinner about enunciation and pronunciation. Um, uh, what else was I going to say? And and get out there. Like I just think of my mom's advice. Like don't don't limit yourself to voice work and anime. Do whatever is in your neighborhood. Do what you can do with your friends. Um, community theater, uh, school theater um what's going on uh stuff on the web which i barely know about i was just talking to someone who was coaching me like i was even saying like what do i need to do how do i book more work and someone was like well what else can you do um can you create more content on the web and i was like oh really but um i've started i've started researching what what can i do i started talking to another actor what can we do together um brainstorm what what else is there how can you take your passion and uh take your passion and your talent and develop it in alternative ways is there anything you like to promote or shout out um right now i'm doing i've been lucky enough to do a series of panels with um a group called happy space popcon and you can find information on them at North at Fayette, at North Carolina, wait, Fayetteville, North Carolina, um, at their convention. So it's ncfayetteville.com. And as part of those panels, I'm actually offering um, merchandise. So you can get pictures, you can get autographed photos and posters and uh, shout outs or um, uh, uh, video links. So it's been a way for me to actually talk to fans, which I not doing conventions, I miss it so much. Um, and speaking of conventions, like things, people are, are starting to book again for next year. 
I'm so excited for that. Like, I just want to get out of the house and meet people again. Well, I thank you all so much for watching. Thank you again for being a great guest. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What a what a pl privilege. Wow. Have a great day, everybody, and stay awesome. And stay awesome. Stay awesome. <laughs>